What a very unusual breakfast. I, I feel had, that was loud. If you have you never had um, proper Middle Eastern Mediterranean cucumbers, you haven't lived. Do go to Turkish shops, Greek shops, Middle Eastern shops, and buy these cucumbers. They are so delicious and a hugely nutritious They're breakfast. Huge. A really nutritious meal is cucumbers, good ones, and nuts. Did you know that? It's like a perfectly balanced meal for your stomach. It's very easy on the gut. It's good for you. Susanna Reid would never start the news with a cucumber. That's why this is such a unique well, channel. I'm thinking more about my gut this morning. You know, lovely dance your tits off. My mm, friend dance your I tits do. off. She you, does. lots of you follow her. She's had breast cancer. I had a dream that I was married to her. Well, she's mad about you. No, but I... She I, said, no offence, Nadia, and I do love you and everything, but if you ever drop dead, I'd go straight for Mark. I think I'd go straight for her. <laughs> no, I had a dream. It was vivid. Oh, I'll have to tell her she'll love that. But anyway, so she she had breast cancer, and then she had PTSD after she had breast cancer. And then, she, like she says, you're always scared that it's going to come back. Anyway, she mm. had terrible COVID last year, and then she got these terrible pains in her stomach, gripping unbelievable agony of course she totally thought it was cancer she went for a scan mm. this is five months ago and they said to her it wasn't cancer and that they would get back to her with the results and they've only just got back to her with the results five months later and she has diverticulitis Ooh, so i can't ever say it diverticulitis what do you think that is it's a problem with the gut every apparently almost everyone has the starts of diverticulitis is it to do with the villi in yeah, it's testing. really bad because it used to be something that people just like in their over 60s, 70s would have. Oh, right. My mum's what, got what, it, your mum's got it, right. Pat's got it. What, what aggravates it? So, bad diet, not enough fibre. So what happens oh, is I all the fine. little villi along your... They're like little willies in your intestine, but they They float. get like little sacks and then like bits of food go into them and then they get, then they get like rotten. And it causes terrible Mrs. pain. Mrs. BD says her father's got it. Yeah, and it causes terrible pain. And now people are getting it in their 40s because of a bad diet. So let's all think, never forget the power of food. I have been eating so badly recently. I'm ashamed. I mean, really, really no goodness. And I'm wondering why I'm feeling so shit. I haven't done my yoga for the last couple of days. It really has an effect. So I'm gonna, I'm pulling myself together and I'm having cucumbers and nuts. Morning, Lynette Griffin has joined Griffith. the Memphis area. Griffith. Welcome, you've got loads of lovely content there because we, of course, we keep everything that we put up there like we do on the main channel. So welcome and hang on to the end because whoever joins the Memphis area gets a welcome song with their name. To welcome So there. Lynette, I'm just gonna write your name down so we get your surname absolutely correct. Yes. Show oh, us your courgette. Thank you for that, Amanda Darby. My daughter's got COVID and recovered her senses slightly today. Has been doing sense training from YouTube videos. Oh, it's Maddie that's actually got. We will get Maddie. It's mm. getting Maddie to do anything. Very teenage. Can't wait to, to hear Mark's views on the Cummings interview. It's coming. Should we say hello to people? Yeah. Good Stuart morning. G. If Hazel any, Malbon. If anyone's just come over from Instagram and hasn't joined us before, can you give us lots of hand waving emojis yeah. so we can spot you and welcome you into our But to all you regulars, Sam JP, welcome as a member. Courtney C, Jen Legs, uh, Was Leggy Blonde, Tina Davis, Lorraine Eads, Karen T, Gabrielle. <gasps> Do you want to take over? Sarah Markey, Coda Egan, Steffi Quinlan, Ben Ashley, Jackie Nunston, Vanessa Wilde, Francoise Camazuli. Oh, Francoise Camazuli. Nice to see you again. Lovely to see you back. Sarah Elliott, Penny Shrimpton, Stuart G, Gemma Parsons, Rebecca W. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're new Emma to the Carter, channel, welcome. just click the um, the uh, subscribe button and the notification Tim bell. Reed. Welcome. And then you'll always be told when we're live. And I'm Emma B, hello. Oh my God. And is Emma Staple here? Emma, well, I messaged you last night to thank you so much for your recommendation. Oh, my God. New reality show. Hi, Lisa H. over from Instagram. Hi, Linda Richardson over from Instagram. Um, hi, my, unknown YouTuber from India. Welcome. Hi, Derry Short. My unorthodox life on Netflix. Mark and I, God, we nearly binged the whole series. It's what an astonishing so, woman and an family. astonishing woman. Good morning, Lavinia Walker. And not... Your usual um, caliber of person in a reality show. Her story is so extraordinary. Hi, Hannah Godley, Goodley, and John O'Neill. These are all new people from Instagram. Welcome. We were just we just kept 
going all the way through. I can't yeah. actually believe what we were hearing. Can't recommend it highly enough. Just top line, a incredible. Welcome, Chelsea. We'll uh, sing your woman, name. Woman, I at think the she's end. about forty. Who grew up in a who who grew up and was married in an orthodox. Jewish community that was extremely, extremely strict. Even by Orthodox Jewish. Unbelievable. Standard. Anyway, she escapes and then her story is totally incredible mm. and you have to watch it. It's remarkable. I think Netflix will have got, because we kept saying, how did they get the access? And I think if you haven't seen the drama, Unorthodox, which is a sensational film about a that. young woman Brilliant. who likewise escapes I a sort of Orthodox Jewish uh, community and family, I wonder some, I wonder whether this woman may have approached Netflix because she will have been so impressed the real by life. the original series. And she now runs yeah. Elite Models. She's extraordinary, extraordinary, and so are her daughters, yeah. and it's just brilliant. I said to Nadia, I think they're going to be sort of for the, well, unorthodox Jews. That's why the titles are unorthodox. For unorthodox Jewish family version of the uh, Kardashians. Kardashians. Fiona Campbell, morning, Mark and Nadia. Vicky Taylor, hello. Welcome, everybody. Unknown have, YouTuber, another, love from India. We have another new member, India. Chelsea Lorraine. Chelsea Lorraine, and another person here, first time, Keki S-G. Dash G. Kiki? Well, Kiki? Maybe pronounce it Kiki. Our daughter's something. called Kiki. I wonder if yeah. you spell it differently. Um, subscribed, Corin Jones. Welcome, Corin. You've got <coughs> lots of madness. Welcome to the party. And just to say... Show, show just to, push yeah, hold on. Just to say, tonight you've got a fabulously funny home time vlog. And if you don't know what a vlog is, it's like a yeah, batshit crazy reality show. And we don't hold back. It all goes in. That looks if great. You, if you've Ooh. never had white courgettes, make sure you buy white courgettes. The difference... Oh, my God. How and much more stuff vegetable these? is going to appear in it? Well, because I went to the Turkish Ooh. shop the other day and, and with Lisa, and I was like, why don't I ever go to the Turkish shop here? And it's because I don't drive. Mm. Uh, we I have think been I growing might start our own vegetables, says Stuart G. They are fantastic. Wow, well done, Stuart. Dandy Magpie, I really want to go to the cinema to see Old after your review. Well, funny you should say that. I'm going to a preview screening on Thursday night so we can review it. Um, so uh, I'll try and do a non-spoiler review, though you kind of know what happens. They all get old. Uh, New Below Deck Mediterranean started next week, or starts next week, Ethan Johnson. We are enjoying, which one are we enjoying Six. at the moment? Below deck what? Mediterranean. Oh, we're, we're enjoying series what? six. Is that the same one? I don't know. Brilliant. Um, have you watched Virgin River? No, we haven't watched Virgin River. What's that? Virgin I tell you what River. we did start watching. What's that? Um, what, did, what was the one that we started watching off the back of the Emmys? The, the triplets? I've forgotten the name triplets. of it. The triplets? Yeah, the triplets, where one of the triplets dies and then the three of them come together. Oh, this is us. This is us. This is us. Uh, we just we started watching that and it's a great premise because I saw that it worked. That's it. Thank you, Katie. Katie Finn. Jenny um, Faye, we've got lots of foreign supermarkets near us. Never thought to go in them. Go in them. Oh, they're You get they're them brilliant. much better vegetables and fruit and... And all the yeah, Turkish just, Greek shops around here, you get brilliant, brilliant watermelon. and watermelon. Don't buy watermelon from the supermarket. Can we go and get watermelon? Chi Chi is directly go? behind us. People are asking about the dogs. So you can see Toffee is uninfectious. Chi Chi is still, she's still got the inflatable sort of tie around her head. We can't be guaranteed that she's not going to get kennel cough, but we had to make a decision between her mental health yeah. and her physical a health. A bit like and she, lockdown, wasn't it? She'd been in there for like too long yeah. and it was starting to really get her. We're not on her own, we were in there No, we were in and out, but it was just a small, but she's used to this big house. She was desperate to get in here, desperate to get in the garden. And she's just so lovely having her back. Reese Roberts, This Is Us is incredible. One of the best series. Sterling K. Brown, who plays Randall, is uh, sensational. Oh, look, we have another member. Amy Moffat. Hi, Amy Moffat. Welcome. Welcome. Stay to the end because we're going to sing you a personal welcome song. Oh, yeah. And when we do members' lives, new members, you stand in a card on which I scrawl a really sort of rude and stupid yeah. message. Yeah, I'm doing the members' live tomorrow, guys. It'll be just me tomorrow. So do join me. Sam JP, you're new. You will get a song as well. Of course you will, Sam JP. And thank Everybody you. gets thank a song. Thank you for your... Well, no, because some people join welcome. not on a live and we don't know they've joined. See what I mean? Ah, but yeah. they, yeah. Yeah, so we wouldn't know. Um, Emma Carter. Oh, look, everyone welcoming people. This is so lovely. And for, you know, ordinary subscribers, you get so much content too. So, you know, oh, Clarkson's Farm. Who mentioned that? I, have you watched, I've watched the first two episodes of Clarkson's Farm. Now fell asleep at the end of episode two. Oh, I love it's it. It's brilliant. We both really liked it. Um, I mean, one of the points that your mum made, which I thought was a really important point, 
was the element of jeopardy isn't quite there because he's got enough money to throw at most situations. Whereas I think if he had... No, but you just approach him like, what an idiot to throw all this yeah, money yeah, yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, You just change your perspective. I love his farmhand, his, his tractor driver, who's just love so him. embarrassed by everything he does. Uh, Natasha Milchin. Summer of Soul documentary about Harlem. Oh, Coast yeah, no. Not... Uh, well, I want to see that. Here. No, no, yeah, it, it's like... It's like the alternative festival that was happening the same year as Woodstock that never got the coverage. I want to see that. Oh, it looks amazing. Thank we you, I saw the trailer CG, at the cinema SG. the other day. Uh, Natasha Milchin. Oh, my 15-year-old Jewish daughter watched Unorthodox and highly oh, it's just recommends brilliant. it. Um, if you come for the news, we do get to the news, but we like a bit of a chat first. If you like to be part of the film reviews more, I'm going to start telling you what we're going to go and see. So the film that I'm seeing this week is old, obviously, preview screening. But there's a new film out called Deer Skin. I would recommend you watch it. It's only 77 minutes long. Oh, please, no. No, please. I don't like it. I don't her. care that you don't like it. No, your like hair looks it. so nice. No. Mark, stop it. Uh, it's called Deer Skin. As soon as Lovely I... hair. It's called Deer Skin. Let me touch it. I don't it. want you to. You're being weird. I don't want you to touch it. Mark. You touch courgettes. <laughs> you don't like it. Mark. What's what? You're behaving like a weirdo. What's the matter with you? Why well, don't you just kind of just... Fiddling with me. Mark. What, Wally? Where's Wally? Um, it's called Deerskin. God almighty, I'm trying to say something. <laughs> it's called Deerskin, and it's about a I man who becomes infatuated Lisa. with his coat. Oh, can't wait. No, it looks really good. Um, you're like a couple of kids. Corin Jones, I had to find the link in Safari. Oh, look at that. That's so sweet. Lucy Williams, I was 20 minutes early and now I'm late. Sorry, gutted. I've been looking forward to coffee moaning. Oh, oh well, Lucy... You're both nuts. Big kiss. Yeah, welcome. Well, you're here now. I talked we about haven't even cucumbers. Started. I talked about courgettes. Yeah, we have. We've talked about vegetables. Do you want to get another piece of veg out of the fridge? No, that's it. Oh. I wish I had my donut peaches here so I could show them, but you ate, ate them. them all. I know. I Every know. one of them, They're Mark. They're so good. I didn't get one and I bought those because I love them. You've got to go to the Greek shop now and get me donuts. Peach donuts. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, you look so weird. Scratching my eye. People will wonder who, what, what's wrong with you. You, that's what's wrong with me. <laughs> okay. Oh, somebody's growing their own tomatoes there. I wish we grew our own tomatoes, Angela Locke. We did last yeah, year. Yeah, but they weren't very nice. You didn't use one. Mark! You don't, I grow things and you oh, don't use them. Oh my I grew the, God, your I, tomatoes I grew were the horrible. Big, they were not good. I grew Jesus the biggest Christ. courgettes one year and she lives and talks stories of stuffed courgettes. Gave her one that long. She didn't and do I any... used it. No, you didn't. You... Mark, yeah, I but not it. for cooking. <laughs> Jackie Bellino, I never grow potatoes here. again. Sweet peas, Susie Offman, they were in my wedding bouquet. Will you grow sweet peas? No. I love I am sweet busy. Peas. I have decided this year not to grow veg because it's so labour-intensive. Labour no, 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 I know, I know but, I, <laughs> but I am going back to your point about tomatoes and everything. I am not growing veg in the Mark, garden. Grow because... veg that tastes nice and people will eat it. If you grow a tomato you know that tastes you, like a potato. You are like the worst person. You wander around going, I want colour here and I want vegetables here. It takes time. Mark, you must admit, your tomatoes gave my, my tongue a rash. There was something in those tomatoes. <laughs> I think the dogs shat in one of the pots. Mark, they were just horrible. My potatoes look great. There just wasn't a lot for the amount no, of sacks. No, but his tomatoes hang tasted on. of potatoes. You, hang on. You made a sa potatoes potato salad, Mark, which I liked. But, but it was you... very chemical. It was, there's no chemical in Mark, them. Mark, it made my throat swell. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> sweet peas are easy to grow. Please grow me sweet peas. Stuart G says, you should see my onions. Whoa! <laughs> Very fancy. Your chard was good. Thank you, Jackie Bellino. His chard was good. Mm. Do you want to insult anything else? <laughs> no, but, you know, people did say to you, your first tomatoes are never good. That's what people... Oh, and strawberries. Do you remember the strawberries? I got one. Got one. One was tried. nice. That gave me, I don't know what chemicals you're putting on them. I'm not putting any chemicals on them. That made my throat swell. I thought I was having anaphylactic. <laughs> you 
your sweet corn, I will never forget it. It was so good, your sweet corn from years ago when you did that. <laughs> it was lovely. It was a, Mark, the sweet corn was lovely. You know what's nice? You know what I love? Cress. Well, you could grow that yourself in the window, <laughs> like a kid at school. Do you know what I've wanted to do ever since school? Make butter. Did you ever oh sit in God. garden so, shaking because milk? Because next you'll be getting a cow in the garden and be wanting, no, shaking, I don't shaking, want shaking, homemade shaking, butter. And then eventually it came out as butter. We've got enough on without making our own Nora bloody Doyle. butter. Nora Doyle, now that it's too late, you've hurt him. She's insulted my veg. Your sister started nicking my spinach. You're, what you do is you make the veg and then you come and you stand and watch me eat it when my throat is swelling from the chemicals and you don't actually eat it yourself so you don't know what it tastes like. I give you the veg, you put it in the fridge, and then you do nothing with it. Mark, because usually it's done something to my throat with the cat. You eat it raw, you shouldn't eat it raw. <laughs> Mark, your veg lost you. Lee, funny. Lee, we've got enough on with... Yeah, I know, I know it was funny. We make great jokes about... Uh, Lee, we've got enough on without making butter. <laughs> exactly, thanks, Lee, you understand. Shake the pot. Anyway, are we going to do the news? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I thought you might have a garlic or an onion or something <laughs> nope. to talk about. I've not. I've no else? more veg. Why don't you share you? about the value, the, great, the what, great attributes though. of nuts? I'll tell you what. Oh, there's nothing like a decent lemon. So I've got a I'm lemon glad. tree. I'm growing lemons. Isn't that nice? I've got it in Poundland. It's nice, isn't it? Why do women buy utterly not necessary things? Because it's a lovely thing. Sophie Jane Matilda, has anyone read Matt Haig's The Comfort Book? No, but I've read The Forever Library or whatever it was. It was really good. Um, have you got any apple or pear trees? We have a pear tree in the corner of the garden that is going to be cut in half so it gives us pears. We have a fig tree off which I had a fig. What fig? It was delicious. Did it make your throat swell? No. Maybe your throat's the problem. Flipping hell. I call my hubby Nabil, um, Tom from The Good Life. We have eight little lemons. Boring headline that was. Okay, no, we were not, looking at Not you boring, it was a headline about Liverpool. No, what was that? I didn't hear that. Um, I call my hubby Nabil, Tom from The Good Life. We have eight oh, little lemons. Oh, eight lemons. The Midnight Library, thank you. That was the book I was talking about. I can remember the sweet I've got an uncle called Stewardry. Nabil. Right, come on, let's get on with the news. You're the, only people people have one, you're the only one holding us back. People have come for the news. Yes, what, what are you talking about? Hit the, the um, like Hit the button underneath up. us if you're liking us talking about vegetables I love instead of the fig. news. I love a fig. Okay, well, I'm not going to lead with Dominic Cummings. I'm gonna, we should lead with tougher measures to protect women, including making street harassment a crime. Can I just ask quickly, before we start talking about that, do you think wolf whistling street harassment of women by men should be a crime yes or no i think i've got a feeling i know what you're going to say do you think it should be a crime you were listening to people on the radio today some women saying it's all right uh you know men can even whistle at other men this is not a problem Clodagh egan no you don't think it should be made a crime crime climb jen legs was like can you explain why you don't think it should be made a crime i mean I had a rant, Chelsea girl, no, I had a real rant in one of our vlogs because I saw with my own eyes, and it, this wasn't people actually harassing the girls. This was men looking at my girls. And it's, I mean, you can't criminalize looking, I recognize that. But I think if you're willing to whistle, catcall, call out to really disgusting things, then I think, yes, it should be seen as some form of recognised harassment. John Dobbins says, my father always taught us how disrespectful it is. Well, how lovely. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> when I think about, I used to be, probably if you track back to years ago on Loose Women, I probably went, oh, well, what's the, what's the problem with it? Was that because, well, it's a bit annoying. Right. But actually, that was me having been manipulated really without even realizing that by society that well, what's wrong with you come on cheer up well it's only a bit of fun well actually when changed. you get you get desensitized to it yeah but when you and it wasn't until i saw my girls starting to get that sort of attention and seeing how intimidated they were by it and frightened and 
um, it affected how they then went out and how they got dressed and how they got that. I started to think, no, it's the low level stuff mm. that, be, that, that blurs the boundaries of what else can be said. So for instance, one of our daughters was waiting at the bus stop and uh, a band came up, whistled, and then said something so horrendous. So explicit. That we were just like horrified, but they were giving the same laughter with it as they were the whistle. I don't even want to say it, it was so horrendous. And you think it's just that vibe. We are, and it's scary. And I, I don't think all men that whistle at women yeah. are violent no. or are me, or even understand that it can be intimidating. It can be really intimidating. When I think back to when I was young and first getting that stuff and you would walk past a group of men. Now think about that, a group of men and you are a lone young girl and they might be doing it just as a bit of fun and might think that you're getting a little buzz out of it because I wouldn't mind the other way around. But actually, what you have to think about, that that girl is actually terrified because she doesn't know what else is going to happen, doesn't know how to deal with it. And I think it's the very start of the disrespect. Just because you're a woman and you're out on the street doesn't mean that you are looking for sexual attention. And so I think it just puts a really clear line between it. Um, I also think, some, I mean, someone just said they can't breathe without being criticised. I don't think that's about this at all. And I think that almost just removes the potential for a discussion. And it's kind of a pointless statement in some ways. Sorry to be, I don't mean to be rude, but it really is. Because we're talking about at what point does something potentially harmless, but still slightly intimidating, because there's a few people here, Deline Lyle, uh, Sarah Elliott, wolf whistles are harmless. I suppose to some it's a compliment. And you rightly say, not all men who wolf whistle no, are going to go on to commit anything awful. And as you also say, not a lot of men will necessarily come from the homes or be educated enough to know that it's not something that's particularly nice. That women nice. actually want. Yeah. Women I mean, don't actually want when, to. Oh, I do look good because somebody's whistled at me, which is war. I'd love to ask all the men who do do it. And usually it's groups of men, whether they be drinking you outside a pub. A woman. No, never. I mean, when you were a young boy? No, not at all. Never. I was brought up by a fem No, I remember as a young boy walking down the street with my mum and that she was always whistled at because she was stunning. And I felt, I felt the hackles on my back up and I yeah. felt so protective yeah. and I didn't feel she was safe at that point. There I you felt go, well that's interesting that you no. felt she wasn't yeah, yeah. safe. Um, but the point I was, what was the point I was trying to make? I'd love to ask a number of the men in these white vans, has doing, or has do, hang on, well it was a white van that pulled up alongside no, Maddie. Yeah. I'd love to ask most of those men, when has you, when has, has it ever allowed you to have a relationship or get what you want when you do that to a woman? Has a woman ever stopped and gone, oh my God, you're so funny? No, but also the question to ask yourself, whatever colour van or car or bike or bicycle you're on, how would you feel if you were standing behind that girl when that happened and it was your daughter yeah, exactly. or your sister so it's not or that... your granddaughter? Exactly. Because I think it's too easy to just think as women as a piece of me or a thing or a sexual being and not as a person that might have all sorts of issues it could be so i think i i totally understand and i would have always argued the point before that oh, it's a wolf wolf whistle what's it matter but i'm changing now bringing up girls because i'm seeing how i was manipulated and then having to undo that vice versa but i love some of the other ideas that are coming with this like a place where women well, can let me just read them through. Yeah. Areas. This is so great. the plan, the plans that are being mooted as legally sort of you know passed in a bill uh, through through Parliament is a twenty four hour rape and sexual assault hate helpline. Absolutely. Five million pounds to tackle violence in public places at night. Five million. It's, it's not going to make nothing, any difference. No. And on and this is, I think is the best thing in this group of suggestions is an online tool where women and girls can report areas where they felt unsafe. Now, why this is the only reason this would be a good thing is if then they respond to that and increase the police presence or because is it just like a box ticking thing here where you can report it and then they go, oh, that's a, that's a, yeah. That's that's a high risk area. They've got to tell us what they're then going to do. Well, when they yeah, get yeah, yeah. Sick. I mean, hopefully they'll find hopefully. hot spots. They'll recognise that. Can I just yeah. read what Melanie Williams has said? Women who think a wolf whistle is a compliment are delusional. Sorry, they've done it to every other woman that's passed through the same street. Entirely agree. And the other point, which a lot of you have said, 
I remember being in a car with someone, leering over someone at a set of traffic lights. And I looked at him and said, she's the same age as my daughter. The silence in, in our car was palpable as he realized, you know, didn't know what to do yeah. with that. And, yeah. and so, yeah, men, think about how you'd feel if that was said to your daughter. And if you're of the opinion, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Now, someone, quite a few of you have said, you know, wolf whistling itself isn't necessarily intimidating. Maybe it isn't to you. Well, if you haven't been intimidated by it, it's not intimidating. But no, if you have been intimidated it is, by it, exactly. it is intimidating. And I'd, I would also go a step further and argue that, you know, it's the start or the first line of a culture of feeling allowed to do that. And yeah. so that can lead to other things. Hazel Melbourne says, I think if my, hub, my hubby would lose his shit if this happened to our girls, of course, yeah, yeah. you see, because then you're... I, I, and Ben Ashley, men get it too. I've been a singer for 25 years. When I was younger, I would get women grabbing me and shouting obscene things at me. It made me feel very uncomfortable. Mm. So you understand what it feels like. Well, that's what it feels like, you know, a lot of the time as a woman, like we've said quite a few times, you know, I, I, I like most other women, have a self-imposed curfew to everything that I do. I consider everywhere I go, what time I'm going, how I'm going to get back, what I might wear, what I wear might, you know, can I, will these shoes allow me to run? Will this um, dress look like I'm saying something? We just do it automatically. We automatically do it. It's just ticker taping all the time in the back of our brains. And that, we've got to start making a change in that. And maybe with this smaller stuff, is the beginning of dealing with the bigger stuff. Derry Shaw says, Mark, in the 70s, many women were not worried about it. I would just check that thought and say, you could almost argue that 250 years ago, women weren't worried about not voting. I mean, I or, think it's or about- Or having an arranged marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I think it's about time changing, education, think, awareness, and all I that I think women in the 70s had a really hard time because mm. it was like all free love and you're all supposed to go with it. <laughs> free and love it's for all men. Fan, and it's all fantastic. And don't be miserable. And now we've got the pill, you can do what you want. And actually, it's, I think a lot of stuff was put on women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there was a lot of different kind of control from men. And women. My mom, my you mom, said that my mom is mom. really good on that whole topic because she was part of that hedonistic 60s, 70s time. And when she reflects on it and looks back, and it's quite traumatic for me and my mom, because as, as her only son, I used to be very protective of her in all the relationships she had. And she came out as gay when, when I was seven. But in those male relationships and all the relationships she had prior to that, she said that it really suited most of the men she was with, all the free love, contraception because it meant they could have a sort of free yeah. ride in a sense and they, and women at the time were kind of likewise because you were coming out the, into the 60s and 70s there was a sense of freedom there was a bit of hoodwinking going on back in the 60s and 70s and i think that's possibly why the feminist movement became really strong in the mid 70s uh you know my flat the flat that we lived the flat that i grew up in uh, was the center for the main feminist meetings in the whole sort of uh you know, elaborate grove area. And so we had lots of women coming in and, 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 and you know, all this stuff has been talked about. It was all kind of seeping into me at a young age. Um, so, you know, again, Mark, you know, when you say women in the 70s, I think it was just about not feeling you could say anything, not knowing anything different and not thinking that things could be different. I mean, if I you think... keep being told that this is free love and you're all really happy about it and this is a compliment and mm. this is, you're lucky if you get that kind of attention from a man because it means you're attractive. You know, by osmosis, that just keeps ticking along. You are going to start like me. I was, I have been completely manipulated all through my teen years to accept something that fundamentally used to shake me inside and used to make me feel fearful. Mm. And then eventually I was probably sat on live television at some point going, ah, just a bit of fun. Oh, I like it. I like it when I get a wolf whistle. Bollocks. I just told myself that because otherwise you were seen as a miserable girl. Reese Roberts, since the weather has been hot, the harassing approach by certain men has been stupendous. Saw a woman with headphones in the park almost had to run to get away from a well, sleazy Well, this guy. is what this the girls is, say. They said the creeps and, come out in this weather. Oh, she said, it, well, they come out in all weathers. Oh, yeah, but Listening so. to it all from our girls is just horrendous. It's just so... And most of them men my age. 
Mark watched it. We've been chatting about yeah, it this yeah, morning. Yeah. So what did you guys think? First of all, did you believe him? Yes or no? Well, first of all, did you oh. watch it? Did well, you watch it? Yes. Obviously, they're only going to answer yes or no if they've watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a no. wasted question. Oh, for God. First of all, did you watch it? Yes or no? Second well, maybe if the vast majority of people didn't, then we won't talk about it in great detail. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, 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 yes. No, probably about half and half. Okay, well, some well, of Well, I'm with you, the ones that didn't watch, and he did watch, so you can sort of like... Yeah, talk I mean, they, he said nothing that hadn't already essentially yeah. been leaked into the press, the day, you know, earlier in the day to kind of get some press and publicity for it. It was all over BBC Radio 4, it was all over the news, you know, it was a big deal. And, you know, I, I was... Th I, we kind of joked about it yesterday on Coffee Morning. was he going to be a simpering sort of Diana? The only precedent I can think of where there was an interview quite so seismic, and and as, as we know, it wasn't a political one, was, was Lady Di or Princess Diana when she talked. Well, that's interesting. Katie Smiley says 89, Katie Smiley 89. I did and was really interested in his body language. Yeah. When we look back now on Princess Diana interview, mm. and we, 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 because at the time we didn't look so much at her body language, yeah. but when you do now, it's so fascinating. What did you think of his body language? Well, before language? I get onto his body language, I was texting repeatedly to a, a friend of mine, Miranda, and I don't know if Miranda, you might be watching this, because she said, you've got to talk about this on Coffee Morning, absolutely. And I said, one of the things I said to her, which really, the first, the first thing that struck me, the first thing that struck me was the best opposition in this country at the moment to Boris Johnson is Dominic Cummings. What kind of a state, what sort of situation state are we in? in yeah. That when you're hearing stuff from a man we don't trust, you want to believe it because you want someone to be in opposition to Boris. So that was the first kind of really weird thing, because I'm sitting there kind of thinking, I don't like you but I want to believe you. And I think that's the big question. Can I just ask, did you believe everything he said? That, that would be an intriguing answer because nothing he said was particularly new. He had a kick at Carrie, Carrie Simmons. Uh, he talked about, interestingly, the fact that Boris Johnson wanted to keep seeing the Queen and it was him that had to say to him, you're potentially gonna, you're gonna potentially Sorry, you just said about the thingy. I'm just trying to just get it so that I you can do it. I just wanted to read what Faith yeah, yeah. said. It and he said it was it was Cummings who said, if you keep seeing the Queen, you might kill her. She's 93. Um, so, you know, it, obviously he had the phrase about it's only killing people over 80, all of that stuff. Uh, most revealing was the fact that once they'd got Boris Johnson into power, Dominic Cummings immediately, the day after, tried to get rid of him or would like, wanted to get rid of him. He's never felt he was suitable for Prime God, Minister. he really is a snake, isn't he? Faith Goodman, even if 5% of what he said is true, it's terrifying. I agree. We are led by idiots. He was covering his face all the time. Yeah, but I don't, I don't genuinely, <clears throat> genuinely, I don't think he was lying. I also think there could be some truth to the fact that he wanted to say that, you know, around the Barnard Castle fiasco, you know, he kind of admitted that he misled the entire country. We all knew that. But, you know, if you just step there and think his family had a security issue, let's not forget, Chris Whitty has had the same thing. You know, this happens in this country. Crowds of people stand outside your house. So I'm not in a, for a minute sitting here going that it was right what he did, because I think it was the thin end of the wedge that started the problem with everyone kind of not really taking anything seriously. But I worry that what everything he said, if Boris stays silent, none of it will stick. None of it was, will stick. I thought the interviewer was shocked and surprised as he started to talk about, I thought the point at which he lost it was when he started talking about some crackpot plan to set up a party and all that kind of stuff. I think the idea of giving the conventional parties a good kicking is a, is a great idea. But someone else I can think of who had that idea was Trump. The idea that you need to drain the, you know, drain the swamp and what have you and get rid of the old ways. I agree, I think systemically our, our political system is fucked and corrupt. I don't, just don't know how happy I feel about Dominic Cummings being yeah. the solution to it when or the brains such a behind snake. it. Yeah. Um, I think he's psychopathic in the way that he talks about people. I mean, you know, he would have been in all those meetings when all those things were said and he wouldn't have been feeling a damn thing about it. Mm. It's like, I actually do believe him. 
But what I think is disgraceful is that he stayed in there allowing all this to happen. How well, she you? kind of... She's a psycho. Yes, well, she sort of said, well, then you let the country down. Yeah. Uh, you know, and... What did he say? He kind of squirmed and looked sort no, of... He, he, he kind of said, well, I was troubleshooting at the time. I was employed to troubleshoot at the time. Yeah, I suppose, to be fair, to play devil's advocate, when you're in it, you're not just going to walk out of it straight away and, and tell the truth. <clears throat> he probably was trying to fix it. Who would he have put in place of Boris? If well, I mean, yeah, him? he wasn't talking about that. I wonder if it was, it was himself. <laughs> no, well, he couldn't because he wasn't elected. Two K two. That was the long term plan. Two K two through the whole thing. This this was the quote that I sent to Miranda. I said, I can't. Be. It's the most brilliant description of Boris Johnson. Calling Boris a shopping trolley was priceless. Now, I liked the way he talked. I liked hearing him relish small. relish his pull down. <clears throat> Of, of Boris Johnson, but there was another, there was another phrase that he used where he talked about how Boris was more interested in buses, bikes, and a stupid tunnel to Ireland than he was in, in anything else, you know, and, 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 you know, you can sort of believe that. I'm trying to find where he said that. I've got the quote here somewhere. It's very, very funny. Um, da -da -da -da. I can't find it. But yeah, he actually said about pe people dying, he said, the age of people dying is above life expectancy. This is a quote from Boris. So get COVID and live longer. Uh, and, and I no longer buy all this NHS overwhelmed stuff. Folks, I think we may need to recalibrate. Johnson, if left to his own devices, could have given the Queen the infection. That was quite dramatic. Cummings admitted he didn't tell the full story about his County Durham trip, security issues. This is the most surprising thing, was him saying this. Is this. this is unbelievable. He said, anyone who says they are sure five years after the Brexit result that Brexit is a good thing must have a screw loose. He still believes in Brexit, but he believes the Brexit we've got now it's shit. is shit. <laughs> and I do have to confess, I think COVID has provided the most brilliant cover for Boris and the Tories and all Brexiteers to say it's because of COVID rather than it's because of Brexit the most. Carrie Simmons comes in for a, a beating. Uh, apparently she wanted him out. So there's clearly beef between the two of them. He hated her. She hated him. She wanted him out. He wanted her out. Um, and yeah, Cummings wanted to get rid of get rid of him. So, and he said the Prime Minister has been in touch recently? No, no. He said that he texted him once after he left, but he hasn't heard from him since. That was it. He, had, he tried to get in touch by phone after he quit, but he didn't answer. It doesn't bother me one way or the other whether we speak again. Now, I do, you know, in terms of whether you believe him or not, What would I you do, do if you were Boris I, and he just done well, that? Well, I'd do what Boris does with everything. I'd not answer it at all and it will just blow no, over. you. Well, he said, this is the most telling bit. I read a piece in The Telegraph today that absolutely, to use the word, eviscerated Dominic Cummings. But apparently Dominic Cummings said, uh, Boris Johnson said to Dominic Cummings, the Telegraph is my boss. Do you get that? Mm. And the Telegraph today is the biggest critic of, of Dominic, Dominic Cummings. Cummings. Oh. So the Telegraph, do what? Because, you know, Boris Johnson will say nothing. He has an entire media that's sympathetic to him. So what do you think of what we've heard? Do you want to talk about vegetables? <laughs> what do you think of what you've heard? What do you think? Is there any surprises in there for you? Well, I think like you, I think it is incredible that he says that about Brexit. But then I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking, is he saying that now? Because he wants to put orders. a great distance between him and failed Brexit. Because of, yeah, course of course he, he was the he was the orchestrator of it all. Yeah. He was the brains behind the it. Architect. We were told that yeah, architect, sorry, that's what I meant to say. He was the brains behind it. We were we were led to believe that there was a genius mm. in charge. Um <clears throat> And as we know, God, you know what? Yesterday, Lisa bought these glasses and they were £100 more than last time. And she said, how can they be £100 more the same glasses? Importation. Brexit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, things are costing more because it costs a bloody fortune to get yeah. things into the country. Mm. Um, I just wanted to share quickly, the, on the front of all the papers is the migrant problem. Um, and obviously, uh, nearly 300 people use the good weather to cross the channel from France. This... This issue is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as the iniquities on the planet get larger and larger and larger. And I just don't know what the solution to this is. We've, I think we've chucked something like 52 million at France to deal with the problem off our shores. Um, 
you know, my thoughts in, in this story don't go to, you know, Pretty Patel and her sort of jingoistic sort of approach to these things. My heart goes out to the actual migrants. We see 300 land on our shores. God only knows how many don't make it. Uh, you know, God only knows. And I just think there has to be a humane way of dealing with them. You know, there has to be a humane way of processing them. Uh, and really, more work needs to be done. Well, this is the terrible contradiction or catch-22 of it. By targeting the horrendously opportunistic and, uh, you know, traffickers, you also remove hope for people wanting to escape. Mm. It's a kind of unhealthy bedfellow and an, un an unwanted bedfellow for many asylum seekers um, and, and migrants. Because, of course, if you target all of the traffickers, you remove their chance for escape. And so it becomes a really, it's a really complicated problem that I anticipate in about 20 years time is gonna be almost insurmountable mm. because the balance between poor and rich countries is only gonna get more extreme. Look at the vaccination. I mean, the WHO yesterday said the fact that however many, you know, the top 10 countries that have 75% vaccination are the top 10 wealthiest countries in the world. You know, so the contrast between rich and poor countries is just ridiculous. Faith Goodman, they're humans. We bond their countries and then don't want to help. Absolutely. Uh, Laura, the arrogance is unbelievable of this people. I'm so petrified after only one jab that caused anaphyla anaphylaxis. I'm already vulnerable as well, so can't have another now. Aww. And they just don't care. It's unreal. Aww. Laura. Aww, Laura. Um, Carol Titmus, I know remark, yes, it's a very complex situation. Imperialism, Melanie Williams and Western foreign policy has generated this. Yeah, I do think it's really important that because people are very quick to say this, about a lot of problems, this isn't historic and we have no part in it. And yet at the same time, we accept that by the click of a button on a computer, you can buy something from India or you can buy something from China or you can buy something up. For, you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't be in this global village and take all the stuff and all the kind of attributes of these poorer countries and then not have any responsibility mm. for them being poor. So, you know, not all these... No, you're absolutely right, Derry. Not, yeah, all, right. not, all, not everyone comes from bombed countries. Mm. There will be opportunists, but let, let me guarantee... I mean, when people say me... economic migrants, exactly. right, that's not... Have, doesn't have any value. Economic migrant could be somebody that is starving and can't feed their children, you know. So, so and of course... We cannot take them, we can't take them all. Mm. But the way that we deal with them says everything about mm. our own humanity, humanity yeah, yeah. and we are not dealing with it in the right way. I mean, my heart's broken. There will be some people that are scurrilous, that are criminals yeah. or whatever, but I think you have to be absolutely desperate to get on a dinghy. Many of them can't even swim yeah. and come across absolutely desperate, whether that's because you're hungry, whether because you want a better life, or whether you're running away from you know, a war-torn country where you may have been tortured, where, whatever, they are human, and we have to deal with them in a human way. But why don't they stop at the first country they get to? I think talk to Italy, they do. I mean, the islands off the south of Italy, there's, there's an enormous number of migrants there. And look, you know, there is an argument that, yes, we have an incredibly, relative to the rest of Europe, a relatively, you know, uh, charitable um, social care system, you know. But even that's a bit of a false argument because you have to jump through so many hoops in this country to be able to access it. So, you know, anyway, so it's just something that I just think is a problem we think about. And finally, Bezos in space. Yes, Amazon can even deliver almost to the moon. Jeff Bezos in space. Someone just said, did he have a one-way ticket so he doesn't come back? <laughs> I just don't understand space tourism at all. I, I understand going to planets, but just to get up there and fly high, don't get it at all. Tamara says, um, global warming caused by us is affecting water wars. Totally it's agree. So, oh, totally Jesus agree. Christ. Yeah. Um, so we've got some welcomes to do. Yes. So yeah. it, now listen, these welcome songs are terrible, yeah. right? We know that they're terrible. And um, it's actually part of our shtick, yes. isn't it? So first of all, we apologise. Secondly, yeah. we've been here 45 minutes. And we've had a really great oh, time with you. One. And there's been on and off thousand of you here. We have 231 like buttons hit. Can you hit the like button? If you've enjoyed spending time with us, hit the like button just under where we're sitting. Vanessa Wilde also doesn't get the billionaire space thing. I just don't get it. I don't I don't get get it. it. We've got so much we've got to be dealing with here. Chuck What's your money at something just, else. Please, God. 
put it into global warming and yeah. thinking about a way we can possibly turn the ship around here, or there's not going to be much of a world left. It's just, a, comp it's of just a competition of courgettes. Mm -hmm. uh, Lynette Griffith. Welcome, Lynette. Griff Hang on, we've got to start again. We've got to be in. Welcome, Lynette. Griffith. Mark. <laughs> Do it again. Welcome, Lynette. Griffith. Welcome, Lynette. Griffith. Welcome, Lynette. 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 Welcome, Lynette. I recommend anyone who gets these appalling. Well, you wanted it bad. I don't know what yeah, I was you, doing you with, with my too, throat. You went too bad. Do do sample these and use them as a ringtone. <laughs> That's what I would That's recommend. That's what other people yeah, have done. Yeah. Chelsea Lorraine. Chelsea Lorraine. Chelsea Lorraine. Chelsea Lorraine. Chelsea Lorraine. Chelsea Lorraine. Welcome to the family guest. Hurry on. Amy Moffat, Amy Moffat, Amy, 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 Amy Moffat, Amy, Amy Moffat. Are we just singing different songs? You didn't even hook in. Let's start again. I'm doing Amy harmony. Moffat, Amy Moffat, Amy Moffat. What's that? Amy. You sound like you're it's on a, a train. It's a drum. Mark, that's awful. Amy no, Moffat. No, Mark, it's very Amy. repetitive tone. It's really annoying. <laughs> Let's try and do it nicer. On, Amy Moffat. Moffat. Amy Moffat. Welcome to our little tribe, Amy Moffat. Amy Moffat. Amy okay, Moffat. stop now. Stop, stop, stop. Amy Amy's Moffat. had enough. Amy's had enough. Sam JP. Sam JP. We You're love doing you and we love to do a wee. Mark, that's Sam JP. No, no. Sam JP. No. Sorry, we love it. you, but we need to do a wee. Mark. What you are literally for? You have to bring wee or poos or bums or farts into everything. What's this ma more man's name? It's a woman What's who follows name? us, and she's be she's in. What's her name? She's been sober. How long have you been sober? What Sixteen you've days. Done? Sam J P. She's been Sam on here loads. Sam J P. Oh, Sam J P. Sam J P. Sorry, Sam. Welcome, Sam J P. Sam J P. Welcome, Sam J P. He's definitely bad, says Fiona Reed. And that was us trying today. Is you know what Kiki one? said to me yesterday in the car? What? You, you've got quite a good singing voice, Dad. She probably needed something. She probably went at McDonald's. <laughs> she did, actually. She wanted a right. Anyway, thing. guys, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Oh, look, 305 have hit the like button. Come on, give us a few more. And if you want to join the members area, you know, Lisa said over the last week, she said 10 people ask her how to join the members area because they haven't been able to do it. So well, how does that work? I don't know. I tell you what, you should post something which takes them to the kind of film that shows it. Yeah. Anyway, wish you were here. Love.